When you've been an interviewer for a while, you start to notice patterns, what successful candidates do and what candidates who end up failing do. Obviously, we all want to be in the first camp, but you'd be surprised at how many people make the same foolish mistakes over and over again, completely ruining their chances of landing an offer. Well, luckily for you, I'm going to give you my insights and observations as a meta interviewer, and I'm going to tell you what mistakes you need to avoid so you can go from being unemployed to posting on blind about your big TC. Before I do, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave some comment for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps me out a ton. So here are the seven biggest mistakes that candidates make when interviewing at Meta that ends up failing them. Please get your pen and paper out. There's going to be a lot of information here to process. Feel free to pause the video and rewind as I will be talking relatively fast. Number zero, not subscribing to this YouTube channel. Okay, I'm only half joking here, but seriously, I've solved basically every top meta question and made tons of videos about how to prepare for meta's interviews. Maybe you're already a lead code god and you don't really need these, but if you're just starting out and dream of working at Meta, I've got solutions to basically every single question they might throw at you, and you're definitely going to need those locked down to pass the coding round, so what are you waiting for? Okay, real first one, not lead coding. You would be surprised at the amount of people who rock up, and it's completely obvious that they have absolutely not prepared for the interview. We're talking either they've never touched lead code or barely solved any questions. It's a well-known fact that Meta asks questions straight out of lead code, and the Meta tagged questions are spot on in terms of the most popular questions. For this reason, it's absolutely crazy to me that people still come to interview day and haven't grinded these questions. It's called the lead code grind for a reason. You need to be drilling these questions nonstop before your interview. On interview day, there's absolutely no time whatsoever to try to figure out a problem from scratch. Maybe with some trivial enough question you can, but there's so many signals you need to give the interviewer that if you spend over 10 minutes trying to figure out a solution, then unfortunately you're done. In exchange for relatively easy and predictable questions, Meta expects a lot from you in the interview and you need to meet this high bar or your chances are greatly diminished. I've made other videos on the hiring criteria and how to approach these problems, so I'll just link them in the description below instead of going over it again. But to summarize, you really need to have the top 75 questions on absolute lockdown. You need to know every in and out of them and be able to explain and code the solution perfectly. On one hand, I am telling you to memorize the questions, but on the other hand, you actually need to understand the algorithms. If you just are regurgitating the code without understanding it line by line, then that's not going to help you. You need to be able to understand and explain everything line by line. Otherwise, it's just so obvious that you have no idea what you're doing or what you're talking about. We do these interviews all the time. We very well know when someone is trying to BS us versus someone who actually knows their stuff. Number two, not practicing with a coach, mentor, or a current or former employee. Now, I'm not just saying this because I offer paid mock interviews. Having someone familiar with the expectations and the interview process is crucial for you because you need to know where your weaknesses are and what you're doing wrong, which could jeopardize your interview. There's a lot of subtle little things that you need to get right to give the interviewers the signal they are looking for, and the only way to truly get this feedback is to work with people who are familiar with the process. You can work with randoms on the internet and get free mocks and you may have some luck with their feedback, but it's not going to be tailored to meta and you won't have real feedback from a real interviewer. Yes, these mocks can be expensive and you may be paying $200, $250, maybe $300 for an hour of someone's time, but in return, you can land a job paying hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. The payoff is exponentially weighted towards getting the job and it drastically increases your chances of success. Even if you completely bomb your mock, don't feel like you've wasted your money because at least you know where you stand and what you need to work on. You'll have an actionable plan of where your weaknesses are. Better to fail in a controlled environment than to blow your interview and have to wait 8 to 12 months to apply and try again. I can't tell you how to spend your money, but in my opinion, the cost is far outweighed by the potential benefits and it's a great investment in your own success. You'll be more confident and prepared on interview day and even just this positive, confident mindset can work wonders for you. Now that we've gone over the things people do wrong before they even get to the interview, let's cover the mistakes that people make in the interview itself. Number three on the list is not scoping out the problem. This is such a common mistake and it costs so many people that they're coding around. 
And the reason for this is so simple. On LeetCode, you are literally spoon fed everything about a problem. The test cases and all the constraints of the problem are basically given to you. You don't need to think for yourself and people fall into this trap of always assuming things about the problem. You spent dozens, if not hundreds of hours grinding lead code and you're telling me you wanna fail your interview because you don't have 60 seconds to ask me whether the string input contains white space special characters or it's just English lowercase letters. This really is the basics here. You need to understand the input and the problem space before you even think of starting a problem. Whenever a candidate reads the question and immediately starts coding, I just know that barring some miracle, they've already set themselves up to fail. Because if you're reckless and skip the entire problem scoping part, then 95% of the time, the rest of your approach will be weak as well. I've seen this sink so many candidates and it's just so sad. How you understand the problem and discuss potential solutions is a key part of the criteria and so many people want to rush, rush, rush into coding that they sink themselves in the process. It's really not that hard, guys. There is a fixed number of problem types. You can basically boil it down to strings, arrays, trees slash graphs, and link lists, and maybe there's a few more sprinkled in. You really just need to memorize some cookie cutter input validation questions for each class of problem and use them. It doesn't have to be something crazy and in depth, just some basic questions to show that you understand the scope of the problem and their requirements. Maybe I'll even make a follow-up video where I just tell you what sorts of questions you can ask. Number four, time management. Meta interviews have a fixed structure. You have 45 minutes. 40 minutes is reserved for the coding part and the last five are always for questions. Maybe if you're very close to finishing near the end of the time, the interviewer may give you an extra minute or two from the question time to finish your code, but that's not guaranteed. The 40 minute interview clock starts immediately and you're always going to lose two to three minutes on just the introduction from the interviewer, explanation of the logistics and you know miscellaneous things. So realistically, you have 38 minutes for two questions. So assume 19 minutes per question. What this means is that speed really is the name of the game. Similar to point number one, where I said people hadn't leak coded enough, well, this is where all of that starts to come through. If you haven't drilled these questions so deep into your memory and you can't recite them quickly on interview day, it's not going to go well. There's so many signals you need to give your interviewer that you just don't have the time to be slow in your coding. You need to scope out the problem, agree a solution, code it, verify it with a test case dry run, and you only have 19 minutes. So if you're not fast, well, you're last. And the expectation here is that you finish both questions, so speed really is king. One thing that really hurts candidates is their choice of language. Whenever a candidate chooses C++ or Java on CoderPad, I already know they're coming in at a disadvantage. Those languages are just so verbose and have so much syntactic bloat that it slows you down when coding. If you can, just use Python. It's literally readable pseudocode. Even if you've never coded in Python before, it's so easy and fast to learn the basic syntax and data structures that just invest the day to familiarize yourself with it. And it'll be so much better than trying to struggle with dealing with C++ or Java's bloated syntax. At the end of the day, what language you choose is completely up to you. And if you feel most comfortable in a different language, then of course, use that. But just know that speed is important and using a bloated language will only waste valuable time and make your code harder to read. Number five, buggy code. As mentioned earlier, Meta's questions are pretty much exactly what you see on Lead Code's Meta tagged list. And if you're looking through the list, you'll notice that most of them are mediums and easies with a few hards sprinkled in. Though I don't really know how often the hards are asked. So in reality, you're probably going to be getting all you know, medium or easy questions and they're not that hard in the grand scheme of things. That being said, you really cannot be rocking up on interview day and writing buggy code. The expectation is that you write the correct solution with the optimal solution. If your code is littered with bugs and is ultimately wrong or wouldn't run, it's a big red flag and it will cost you. The only exception to the statement is that if you have bugs in your code, but you can catch them on your own, either while writing the code or during the verification process. This actually is a very positive signal for the interviewer and it will benefit your assessment. But with that being said, you ideally want to catch the bugs as you're writing them because if the interviewer has to point them out, they will have to mark this as a hint given and it may cost you. So ideally you don't want to leave it to chance as to whether the interviewer will call it out. Most of the time they will wait a bit to see if you do it on your own, but some may call it right away and it can ding you. So keep that in mind. Number six, poor communication. 
I want to preface this by saying that I understand that for some of you watching, English is not your first language, and that's not your fault. That being said, communication is still a very important factor, and you also need to do well in this area to pass. There's three high-level areas where people struggle with their communication. The first is in explaining technical topics. If you can't explain what your algorithm will do or how you will implement a particular piece of logic, it's a red flag. It shows that you don't actually know what you're talking about and that you don't have a good enough grasp on the topic to explain it in an understandable manner. Even worse, if you can't explain your algorithm but you can somehow code it perfectly, then it's really obvious that you're either cheating or you just memorize the solution without understanding it. The second is during the coding phase. Too many people will sit there and try to code in silence. This is really bad. It disconnects you from the interviewer and it makes it hard for them to jump in and course correct you if you get stuck or you go down the wrong path. Losing your interviewer's attention is never a good thing and sitting there silently trying to code is the best way to achieve this. As an interviewer, I want to know that you understand the code you're writing and the best way to do this is to walk me through it line by line as you're writing it, explaining your thought process along the way. The third time is during the verification phase where you're going to be running through a test case to make sure your code actually works. But verification is actually the next item on the list, so I'll go straight there instead of repeating myself. Number seven, poor verification. After you finished your code, you need to actually check that it works. And hopefully you followed my advice about preparing well, so you managed to code your solution with time left to spare so you can verify. Not having enough time for the verification phase is not a good thing and it can cost you because it's an important factor in the final decision. When you are verifying, the biggest mistake that candidates make is that they do it in a hand wavy manner where they walk through the code out loud. They sort of breeze through the logic and give a half-assed walkthrough where it's basically impossible for them to catch any bugs or mistakes in the code. Their mind knows what the final solution should be and how the algorithm in theory should work, but they aren't methodically doing it and when this happens, it's basically curtains for you. The best and only way to verify your code is by doing it in a methodical manner. You need to write out all of the variables in the code and what their current value is. You then walk through the code line by line, highlight the current logic and update the variables as you go along. You essentially need to become a human debugger. This is the right way to verify your solutions and shows you have a methodical approach to verification. Even better if you're able to catch and correct any bugs in your own code, as this shows you are truly engaged in the process and are actively thinking about the code instead of just trying to go through the motions. So that was the list of the top mistakes people make, but since I want you guys to be as prepared and do as well as possible, there's a few honorable mentions. The first one is showing up late. It actually baffles the mind how someone can show up to their interview late. You literally chose a time that would be suitable for you. And you had the fortune to make it through the resume screening, the recruiter call, and you've now got an interview and you don't even show up on time. And worse still, some candidates don't even have CoderPad open and set up with their selected language. Seriously, are you joking? Not only does this make you seem completely unprofessional, you're wasting precious interview time, but your interviewer will judge you for it and it's going to annoy them that you don't even have the basic respect to show up on time. It's a really bad look, so whatever you do, do not show up late. I understand, sometimes there are extraordinary circumstances, but seriously, if you are a chronically late person, get your ass into gear this one time. The second is a poor internet connection. There's nothing that throws off an interview more than network issues. If you start to cut out or lose connection, it just slices through the flow of the interview and costs precious time. Make sure nobody else on your network is, during, uh, is using the network during the interview, or as a backup, have your phone ready to go as a mobile hotspot in the rare case that you do actually disconnect fully. The third one is cheating. Some of you really think you're clever and sneaky. You think that that second monitor with the answers is going to save you, that ChatGPT is somehow gonna generate a solution for you. I can literally see the reflections of a second monitor on your eyeballs. I can see when you're stuck and then you manage magically look to another screen and now you know how to solve the solution. Trust me, you will get caught. We are not stupid. We know how to spot cheaters. We know what candidates who don't cheat do. And it's so obvious when someone starts acting out of that norm. Also, there's built-in functionalities inside of CoderPad that will tell us if you've been doing any funny business. So just don't even try it. You will get caught and you will fail. Just put in the time to study and you won't need to cheat. The interviews aren't really that hard. They, they really aren't. There's just no need to cheat. Before I go, I just wanna give one bonus tip. And this one is a bit of a hack, but I swear it works, so please hear me out. 
To increase your chances, all you have to do is really just this one thing. Be a pleasant and nice person. Literally just that. Be polite, friendly, easygoing, relaxed, and it will get you so far. If you can win over your interviewer by just coming across as a nice person who is pleasant to chat with, it's like a superpower. Psychologically, you just go from some random candidate to someone your interviewer is friendly with, and it literally lowers the bar for you. If you manage to put a smile on your interview's face and warm them up to you, then they really start to root for you and trust me, they are willing to overlook little bugs and represent you in such a more positive light during the final feedback write-up. These interviews are not just about your technical skills, but also the question of would this person want to work with you if they were a colleague? Obviously, it's hard when you don't have um, the chance to make small talk at the beginning, but if you do manage to win over your interviewer, the chances of passing are just so much higher. And there you go. That's my entire database of interview experience knowledge for you. I hope that you learned something today and you can apply this advice in advance of your meta interview. If you made it until the end, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.